Is there a nice little way to understand sine and tangent? Yes, and the first step is imagine a circle. Actually, don't imagine it, just look at the circle up here. We've got a circle and we've got a certain portion of that circle marked out to indicate a given angle. Right now, for example, we've got a roughly 50 degree angle. As we fill out our angle all the way to the edge of the circle, it's going to intersect at a particular point. In this case, we can see the ordered pair 0.645 comma 0.764. Now, I wanna bring up a little display for sine and cosine. We take the sine of that 49.83 degree angle or the cosine of that 49.83 degree angle and we get whatever results we get. We just have the calculator tell us. But as we sweep out different angles within the circle, there's a funny connection you'll notice between that xy pair on the edge of the circle and the values for sine and cosine. As we sweep out different angles on this circle, we can see that the x coordinate for that ordered pair on the edge of the circle always corresponds to our cosine value. The y coordinate, on the other hand, always seems to correspond to our sine value. And this is because that's exactly what sine and cosine are. Sine and cosine are just different ways to talk about the x and y coordinates on the edge of this circle that we call the unit circle. A unit circle because it has a radius of one unit. Tangent can appear a little trickier. As we look at the tangent of a certain angle, it's not necessarily obvious how it relates to these same x and y coordinates that cosine and sine represented. This is because tangent actually represents a ratio, a ratio between those same sine and cosine values from earlier. Meaning tangent itself is still related to the ordered pairs, it's just the ratio of the y coordinate, the sine value of our angle, to the x coordinate, the cosine value of our angle. This also means that tangent is actually giving us the slope of the particular line passing through that angle. When we're looking at angle values here in quadrant one, the line that passes through the center of the coordinate plane, the origin, and the edge of the circle has a positive slope. And so tangent values for all the angles in quadrant one are positive. But then when we get over here into quadrant two, the slope of that line is now negative. That is, it's moving down as we go to the right. And so what we see is that for angle values in quadrant two, tangent is negative. As we move back into quadrant three, the angle now slopes upward once more. And so those positive slopes correspond to positive tangent values. And then finally, all the way over in quadrant four, tangents value once again is negative. But this is the heart of trigonometry. It would be much better in some ways to call it circleometry because it's actually telling us a lot about the unit circle. The fact that it can also tell us a lot about trigons or triangles is in some ways kind of a coincidence. We can of course always draw right triangles with a vertical length that corresponds to our y coordinate and a horizontal length that corresponds to our x coordinate, but fundamentally we're actually looking at relationships within circles.